conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Rick Wallace uh, chiming in with you this morning, as usual, hoping to uh, help you get your day off to a good start uh, by sharing something with you that will be uh, hopefully inspiring, motivating, and empowering all at the same time. Uh, I stress this a lot uh, because I believe it to be 100% true that how you get your day started will have a massive impact on the way that your day goes. A lot of things you don't have the capacity to impact, impact directly, but when you have the proper mindset, when you encounter these things that are external, it allows you to make better decisions. It allows you to interpret it better. It allows you to maintain a sense of who you are, your identity, your purpose, and your power to engage anything that you will uh, come upon as you move through life. So starting your day off with the right mindset, with an understanding of who you are, with a positive uh, thought process in place that will allow you to properly interpret uh, interpret life as you move forward is extremely, uh, extremely important. So I hope that you know, uh, me sharing with you guys on a consistent basis is in some way helping you get your day off to a good start, but more importantly, get you into a mindset of developing your own process of getting yourself up every morning and making sure that you're in the right mindset to engage the challenges of life. Because one thing is certain, you are going to have challenges. You are going to have difficulties. You are going to have hardships. Um, I want to talk to you about one of the uh, one of the uh, most influential forces in the current state of society. When I talk a lot, I talk a lot about uh, getting away from the tolerance of average, the tolerance of mediocrity, uh, raising the standard of life, raising your expectations in your life as far as living your purpose and, and, and functioning in your passion and understanding how your design impacts your purpose. All of these different things I talk about, and I talk about the importance of getting away from the tolerance and the uh, acceptability of, of mediocrity and average as being satisfactory and okay in this society. Earlier, I posted a post by a man by the name of Rollo May that simply said, the opposite of courage in this society is not cowardice, but conformity. Uh, and, 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 and I, given thought to that, when I, when I uh, read that, it, it immediately hit me, you know, it's not, it's not the fear that is the opposite of courage. It is the unwillingness to step outside of what is normal, what is average, what is considered acceptable by the masses and do those things that you're passionate about, those things that move you, those things that 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 plague your thought processes and and yet you set them aside so that you can go do something that everyone else does. Everyone's walking around. I mean, think about it. When you ask yourself a question, think about it. We talk about it but we don't really process it. We don't really look at it and how it impacts our lives. A lot of us have a lot of knowledge about what it takes to be successful, what it takes to be, uh, uh, you know, elevate your life, to live life at a, at, at a different level than most people in, in, in a number of different ways. It's not always about money. Sometimes it's about being a great spouse, being a good husband, being a good wife, being a good parent, uh, operating within the confines of what you do for a living at an exceptional level, uh, doing what it is that you're passionate about, irregardless to what it pays you. Those type of things are, 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 are a part of being successful. We talk about it and we, we, we know a lot. We know that you are what you think. You, you, you are literally, ultimately, and aggregately 
all that you think. What you think on on a consistent basis is what you will become. What you focus on is what you will get. It's that simple. You get what you are and you become those things that you consistently think about. If you focus on things that are negative, you're going to produce a life that produces the predominance of negative negativity. If you focus on things of positive, you develop a positive mindset, develop a focus of what it is in life that you want specifically, and you direct yourself towards those things things. There's nothing in this world that can stop you. So with that being in, 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 in focus right now, that if you focus your mind on having something and you set your mind to believing that what you focus your mind on is yours and that you can have it and you start working towards it. And we know that when you start working towards those things that your mind uh, says you can have and you desire it, that the universe conspires on your behalf to bring you that thing that you are seeking. So now you're not working alone. You're working with the powers and the forces of the universe to obtain that which you can have, meaning that it is impossible to stop why is it that so many people are not succeeding why is it that you have over 18 million people uh, either 65 or older in this country and the vast majority of them are literally dependent upon the government subsidies that they receive from social security to even provide for them the simple um, necessities of life why is that why is it that you can start out a bunch of people in life at the same place as far as desires and understanding and 30 and 40 years later, only 5% of them have actually acquired any, any form of success. The other 95% are in a bad situation and in need of someone else to provide them with relief. Why is that? It's because we have gotten to a point to where we instinctively, good morning, Sandra, uh, we instinctively conform. We do what everyone else is doing. We've been taught that. That's one of the problems. When I wrote the book, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, it pointed out a system that not only negatively impacted black children, but it was highly um, uh, it was highly uh, negative as far as the impact on black people. But the entire system is a system that is designed to teach conformity among all who go through it. So everyone who goes through it is taught this form of conformity. The conformity says you get up every morning, you go, uh, you find, you go to school, you complete school. You, uh, if you qualify and you have the means, you go to a secondary education that provides a higher level of academic achievement, which provides a higher capacity for you to earn a living being paid by someone else. You wake up every morning, you go to this job. It doesn't matter if you really, really truly are fulfilled by the job, but you get up and you go to the job. Why? Because you have to have the job in order to pay for the bills that you have. Then you get caught up in the idea of consumerism, which is another form of conformity. Everybody else is spending money on these nice things. While I'm working hard for what I make, why not me spend money on these nice things? Uh, I understand. I know because I read the book. I know because I uh, watched the lecture. I know because I listened to the uh, iPod presentation that if I manage my money correctly, if I invest my money correctly, if I focus on being an owner instead of a consumer, I'll develop a, a, a certain level of wealth that I can build on that will consistently place me in a better situation of being stable, uh, comfortable, and able to provide for my family as well as pass on this legacy of wealth to my uh, progeny, and it, which they can pass on to their offspring. But, 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 but there's this thing. Everybody else is spending money. Everybody else has nice cars. Everybody else, but everybody else is living at their means. Every, and that is statistically proven almost across the board that almost 90-something percent of the people in this country are living at their means or beyond their means, meaning that they're in debt. And so they are literally going in debt, robbing their family and their descendants of wealth for the sake of conformity, for the sake of looking like the Joneses, for the sake of doing what everyone else is doing. Everyone else is okay with mediocrity, so I'm going to be okay with mediocrity. If nobody's pushing me, if nobody's applying pressure, if nobody is demanding something of me, I'm not going to demand it of myself. I'm going to do just enough in this life to get by. That's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be there because it's comfortable. It doesn't demand too much of me. It's not a whole lot of responsibility associated with it. Uh, I, I, if I show up every day and I'm a good employee, even if something happens to the company I'm at, that good work history will follow me and I'll be able to go out and get another job somewhere because I'm a good worker. And so I'm good with that. I'm going to show up every day, make sure everything that's expected of me is done, but I'm not going to do anything beyond what is expected of me.
I'm never going to deliver beyond what's expected of me. Whatever is expected is what I'm delivering. I'm not trying to push it beyond that because I'm comfortable. And see, so everybody's gotten to this place of conformity. Nobody is willing to step outside of conformity. Number one is, but let's be honest, we are very, very, very aware and cognizant of what other people think about us. The reflected appraisals of those in our periphery, periphery those that can uh, uh, observe us and what we're doing, be aware of our dreams and our visions, be aware of our aspirations and, and hopes. Those people are, 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 are and, and what they think of what we think and what we feel is extremely important to us. So when we, when we start thinking outside of the box, when we start dreaming with expectations that's in excess of what the average person dreams or thinks or looks for or expects out of their lives, we immediately start reeling ourselves back in because there are all kind of uh, adjectives out there that describe people who dare to aspire and have have this certain level level of intolerance to mediocrity. See, they're going to call me arrogant. They're going to say that I'm not humble. They're going to say I don't have any humility because I'm standing up here and I'm demanding so much of myself and I'm refusing to accept excuses, not only from myself, but from anyone that's in my periphery. They say that I'm judging them and where they're living at. And so I can't have that. I've got to pull myself back. I've got to find this place of conformity. I've got to be politically correct in how I carry myself, how I speak, how I address issues. I've got to fit in fitting in is a guarantee that you will never live life at the level of your design fitting in is a guarantee that you'll never fully achieve success at the capacity of the potential that rests inside your design spiritually psychologically emotionally physically intellectually all of these things that are flowing through you with this un unbridled unlimited potential has been bridled by your desire to fit in those who are successful don't fit in those who achieve a uh, phenomenal wealth don't fit in those who are out there living life in their passion don't fit in conformity is one of the most destructive forces in our society today because it teaches everyone that you have to fit in you have to look like everybody else you have to behave like everybody else but the thing is you're not everybody else you are a unique individual now there are certain codes of behavior that move along the line of lines of legality and morality that you should operate in ethics should be a part of what you're functioning in. you should be going after everything that your heart desires within the scope of ethic ethics and the respect for other the people if what you're doing to pursue your dreams does not negatively impact others and it's within the uh, the confines of legality you should be going after it you should be putting it in the last thing on your mind should be fitting in and conforming to what everyone else feels is acceptable that is one of the most powerful forms of courage is to step out from the norm and to create a new path. Decide that you're not doing things the way everyone else is doing. And the thing is, I see some people uh, that I either uh, uh, am in contact with personally or that I know through business or that I know through observance on social media. I see some people stepping out, some people that have picked up uh, the torch and are now living in their passion that are stepping outside the comfort zone and living what their heart tells them they should be living without concern of what other people are thinking about them. I see it. It's, it's catching on. But far too many. I'm telling you, 95 percent. Of people who start life out thinking that they'll be successful at some point fail to get there because they get caught up in the trap of conformity. They start looking at what everyone else is doing instead of examining themselves and measuring themselves and competing against themselves. I say this all the time. I don't compete against another man. I don't compete against uh, 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 what, what another man's doing, how much success another man has had. I'm not looking at that. That's why I have no problem being in the presence of greatness. That's why I have no problem celebrating other people that are doing exceptional, extraordinary thing because their shine does not dampen mine because their success does not convict mine. I am good with where I'm working and what I'm doing because I'm competing with me. 
I'm competing with what I'm capable of. I'm competing with my design. I'm competing with my potential. I'm competing with what I expect out of life in the fullness of what I should have based on what I, based on my design. And because I believe that there's nothing impossible to me, everything that flows through my mind that is positive, that has the potential to not only bless me, but to, uh, to add favor to my family, to my friends, to my community, to my race, and to the human race. I'm going after it. I'm not allowing anything to sit up and stop me. I don't need anyone's permission. I don't need the approbation of anyone else to go after the things that my heart is telling me I am supposed to be going after that I have a right to have. I don't need permission. I'm not looking to be conformed. I don't want to be in the large pack. I don't want, it's too crowded in average. It's too crowded in mediocrity. You can't move around in mediocrity. There's no freedom in mediocrity. There's no liberty in mediocrity. That's too much restraint in mediocrity. That's too many people telling you what you got to do in mediocrity. I don't want to function in mediocrity. I want to live my life in a place where I'm determining the outcome of my destiny, not asking somebody to value my work. Conformity will destroy your dreams. Conformity will destroy your potential. Conformity will lock you into a life of mediocrity where all you will do is fit in. That's too much gravity and, and, and too much priority given to fitting in. You should want to be you. See, that's something unique about you that nobody else can be you. Be you. Just in being you at the fullest capacity that you are capable of will automatically influence the world around you, making it a better place than when you entered into this world. And that's your ultimate goal. You should want to leave the world better than where you found it. It's that simple. It is that simple. That's pretty much it this morning. There's a lot going on. There's a bunch of things. Th th this whole thing with conformity ties into so many different things. Everybody's trying to make everybody be what they want them to be. Everybody's applying pressure to everybody to think like them, do like them, be like them. If you don't like my lifestyle, I'm coming after you. If you don't believe in what I do for, I'm coming after you. If you don't accept the religion and faith that I accept, I'm coming after you. All of these different things. Live your life. Now, I believe in a code of ethics. I believe in a code of behavior and conduct. I believe that those things have to be demanded from everyone. I believe that if you're going to participate in a collective, there has to be a code of conduct. Certain things you don't do to one another and that that is unacceptable. Certain things that you're required to do for one another. But as far as how you prepare yourself to be in the best position to do these things, that's completely, totally up to you as long as it's not negatively impacting others in order for you to rise in other words you're not stepping on other people's backs harming other people then you've got a right forget that you've got a responsibility to be going after that thing which is greater inside of you conformity don't allow conformity to destroy Your, 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 your dreams, your visions, your, your capacity, your potential. That's it for now. Uh, as I always say, man, I'm going to die on E. I'm going after it. I, I, I refuse to hang around and, and meander through the maze of mediocrity in that crowded uh, arena of everybody just simply existing. I refuse to do that. I refuse to accept that any form of, 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 of substandard living is my lot in life. Now, I'm going to have difficult moments. I'm going to run into things where, you know, things are not going well. You're going to have times where you completely and absolutely have things blow up on you and nothing seems right. But that's not your lot in life. That's a temporary situation and you have the power to overcome it. 
So that's where you live your you live your life with an understanding and an uh, understanding that you have an exceptional ability inside of you to overcome, to conquer, to win. And you are a winner. That's something inside of you that won't let whatever you're going. I don't care if it's incarceration. I don't care if it's homelessness. I don't care if you've gone through several divorces. I don't care if you grew up poor. I don't care if you grew up without a father. I don't care if you grew up and you were molested as a child. I don't care what whatever you've gone through through that there's a power inside of you implanted in you by the almighty to overcome everything that you have encountered in your life and to win you were born to be a winner and you don't accept anything else but the fact that you're going to win sometimes you're going to wake up in the morning and you're not going to know how you're going to win but wake up and fight anyway Wake up and fight understanding that you know that there's something better on the other side of this temporary circumstance. That's it for now. But we've got to learn how to put on the winner's jacket. Wear a jacket other than mediocrity and average. Wear a jacket other than I'm just existing. Wear a jacket other than I'm just surviving. How can you claim to be the product of of an infinite almighty God and then accept mediocrity and average as your lot in life. I don't care what your faith rests on. If you rest on your faith on an almighty that placed you here and that you are an infinite design of and representation and manifestation of this God. How dare you think that you were meant to roam this earth in average and mediocrity, in a mediocre existence, and just survive? I'm out of here. I love you guys. You can't even imagine the depth at which I love you. I tell people all the time that the first half of my life was about me. It was, a go it was about going out and getting things that I wanted, making accomplishments and achieving things and having what Rick wanted and doing what Rick was going to do, no matter what nobody else thought. I still don't care what anybody else thinks. But the second half of my life is about building my legacy. It's about pouring into the lives of other people, giving other people hope giving them an idea uh, that's planted, that seed that's planted that says there's something exceptional and unique about you, that says you can do the exceptional and the extraordinary. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that until I leave this place. Be all that you, des you were designed to be. If your life is focused on living a mediocre existence, You've got to be certain that your expectations are disappointing to your creator. I'm out. Peace. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities. Uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, it's all of the elements.